hurricane wind power here. Come on. We're on, we're ready to go. All right, here we go. Um, Tony from Hurricane Wind Power here. Today I wanted to bring you the uh, release and abbreviated assembly video of our high energy Pegasus 1500 watt wind turbine. The um, wind turbine, I think I want to briefly just go over how they work, what this wind turbine will do that I don't think some of the other market offerings have and how this can be used in the new types of systems that are on the market to integrate and charge your 48, 24, and 12 volt battery packs. Um, first of all, I'm gonna go back a little bit to basics and um, answer some frequent questions that we get in the process of doing this video and explaining this wind turbine. Um, one of the frequent things is about the output so this turbine does output wild three-phase AC. This isn't to be confused with, and we've changed the voltage to 96 volts instead of 110. There's no real difference. It's just fractional. Um, however, when we put 110 volts on a wind turbine, sometimes folks think that especially when it says AC, that they can possibly hook this up to the electrical grid. And that is not so. Um, wild three-phase AC, you're able to run that a little bit farther with lighter gauge wire. Um, also, when you get to the termination point, this goes on a three-phase rectifier, which changes the output to DC. And everybody knows, or should know, or maybe they don't know. If you don't know, I'm glad to glad to be enlightening here. That you know, that's what type of power goes to uh, your battery bank. So while three phase AC, the frequency is variable in that it changes with the uh, pitch of the wind when the wind raises and you higher RPM versus lower RPM, the frequency in terms of hertz or cycles per minute is going to change. So, you know, it, when you get into grid ties and inverters that backfeed the grid, the hertz remains stable. That's one of the reasons that you can't do that and just hook up the three wires to the wind turbine. Um, something else that I wanted to talk to about briefly it's getting wind season in terms of if you're going to put something up before winter time, it's time to do that. Um, part of why I, I mentioned in my last video, spinal lesion, COVID, working in the shop building wind turbines, not a good look for me these days. We have taken a lot of what we have done and learned over the years in uh, move that into the other manufacturer who is now building our turbines. The um, just is that frequent that um, frees me up to do more with design in our larger solar installs, which we do a lot of. Wind is still a good power source from for some folks, depending even in 2024 depending on where you're at. If wind power, if it were an algebraic function, it would be, um, you've got linear power curves. This is an exponential power curve. So, I mean, that would, I'm not getting out whiteboard Tuesday. We're not doing that, but it would go up and then it would all of a sudden shoot up. So, which is to say, this is a 1500 watt wind turbine. So, you know, I know, off the top of my head, on a thousand watt wind turbine at 18 miles an hour, you're going to get probably around 400 watts. When we go up to the last six miles per hour on the curve, you end up getting your last 600 watts. So that's where your exponential power goes in, which is part of why when I see some folks rating things at 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 miles an hour, it is not an apples to apples comparison and it's not a real world 
explanation or expectation of what a wind turbine will do. Secondly, um, maybe thirdly by this point, part of the delay in what we have done is understanding that this isn't, you know, I've been doing this since 2008 and we are not in the same market we have in the past. And more often than not, customers may or may not be using lithium iron life, life pro four batteries battery packs expensive batteries with expensive bms systems in those now understanding that a battery management system in a lithium iron phosphate battery um, it disconnects so when we take one of our old sealed agm batteries and we put a voltmeter on there invariably we're almost always going to get a reading unless something catastrophic has happened in a wind turbine it is uh, it's important to understand that there's two primary ways that this thing slows down and doesn't fly apart in the first way you have a load from a battery or a grid tie inverter not a lot of that stuff you all listed on the market but just for the sake of discussion that load stays on the rectifier, that loads up the wind turbine, and it causes some resistance. In a lot of my old videos where I would manually drive things with a drill, which I'm not gonna do in 2024, you, you notice, one of the first things that you notice when you, when you drive into a permanent magnet alternator, or at least a good one, it should be smooth, uh, you see, um, it should be smooth. There should be that you know, free feeling. You shouldn't get a lot of thump, 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 thump when you're turning it if it's a decently made generator. Matter of fact, in 2024, only stuff that's made pretty terrible should you feel anything except a slight resistance. This is a radial motor. A radial motor or generator is, it's, as you can see, there is a stator and there is a rotor inside this. So you have a magnet inside, which is always going to be pulling away from an electrical steel stator cord. So there, you got heavy magnets in there. There should be some resistance, but you shouldn't get any of this stuff like you're riding on bicycle spokes, but somebody took the, took the rim off the off the bicycle. So the um, gist is where I was going with that. Lithium batteries and you know the way the motor works is when you drive torque into the motor, you're, it's, everything's gonna feel free until the voltage in the stator core exceeds what is in your battery bank. When you do that, you're gonna see this whole loading effect not unlike um, a motor or motor mounts in a car when there is load it wants to twist and you know that's where having this heavy steel casting in a heavy structural steel well-built tower with proper guy wires and a proper amount of cement and all that stuff comes that comes into play the um the loading effect on a lithium iron phosphate battery can go away. There is a uh, normally closed circuit that when, it, when it's closed, if we put a multimeter on there, we're going to get voltage. When the BMS detects it's too hot, it's too cold, the cells need to be equalized. If there's anything wrong with that battery, um, it will disconnect. And some of the initial thinking that I had would be that we dump two tenths of a higher than a volt higher than bulk charging on solar. And that will keep us from turning off a BMS with um, overcharging of the battery. That's just one of many conditions that you may encounter which is to say i believe and part of the reason and what i'm trying to explain is the reason we have not put this turbine on the market 
earlier is we actually do some testing, make sure everything is safe before we um, get this out to the public. For liability's sake, what I've learned over the years is if people can do something wrong, you just have to make the assumption that that's what's going to happen, and um, we do that. In this instance, what I am suggesting is if you're running a 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, what we use and what we recommend is our high energy 1500 watt turbine. On a 48 volt system, we like to use the 96 volt higher voltage winding so we can get power programmed into where we're producing a little bit of power and a real, real low wind speed. So exponentially, uh, we use the Midnight Classic Clipper Combo. We've got in that uh, 200 or 250, depending on you know what, what voltage system you're running will depend on our recommendation. But there are 16 spots in that power curve where we can incrementally add resistance to match the same exponential mathematical power curve that wind produces. It's in this manner which you know people need to understand, and I've said it in videos for years, um, wind power production isn't a track meet, it's a marathon. And what I mean by that is how many kilowatt hours do you produce over time? I have looked at video, I, I, I don't look at YouTube video, and if some of this information I'm providing has been addressed by other people, so be it. I haven't seen some of these issues that I'm bringing up and discussing today um, discussed anywhere. And as a matter of fact, I've called some major manufacturers and in tech support, what the things we're talking about today are either an afterthought or uh, I'm getting a, oh, oh yeah, that type of thing. Um, anyway, if you use our Midnight Clipper Classic Combo with the high energy wind turbine, that acts as an intermediary and there's no way that high voltage can go through to the battery. So to clarify, in a condition, whereas a battery management system lets go of a wind turbine and there's no voltage to hold down the wind turbine, it will spin up, it will let go, and that load is gone, thereby increasing the voltage that will come across on the rectifier. So if whatever condition in a battery management system in a lithium iron phosphate battery corrects itself, or if it cuts out overnight because it's cold, and then around noon, it heats up to where the condition is corrected, if that BMS um, battery management system reconnects the battery and there's 200 open DC volts coming across the system, things are going to end up bad for your expensive lithium iron phosphate battery system that you may have paid $20,000 for. So we want to do all good and no harm here. And um, that's where we're at. Now, I mean, there's some other circuits, diversion load wise, that we may be implementing to protect for that condition. But, you know, for me, after being in this almost, at least starting as a hobbyist, we're coming up on 20 years. And for me, the protection of the battery system plus the, um, plus the fact that we are trying to make kilowatt hour production over time and this charge controller will allow us to program in the wind MPPT. The test results I've seen over the years with a setup like that in terms of continuous kilowatt hour production over time, I'm just going to throw a number to it. You can produce two to three times as many kilowatt hours as you do with a turbine 
where uh, you have a condition where the voltage goes up, 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 it hits a cut in point, there is a load applied to the battery or to the turbine from the battery, then the uh, turbine produces power for a moment or two, and then the load is too much, it pulls the turbine below the cut in point, and then it takes 20 to 30 seconds for it to achieve RPM to where we're generating power again. So, you know, when you're looking at the cost of a diversion load controller versus an MPPT controller, I get it. Um, I totally get that. And I, I totally get that when we're um, looking at over voltage protection and clipping devices, that many of you um, either don't think that's necessary or not so much as don't think that it's necessary. You know, you look at the price of that part and start looking for other alternatives to do that. And if you're able to do everything and meet all the concepts that I'm saying, I mean, I can't warranty that, but possibly you can do that. I have not really found anything that will, if, if that controller goes offline, there's a third layer of protection. Uh, it, it's got a potentiometer chip in there that clips at a specified voltage. Other turbines or diversion load over voltage devices are generally just diversion load uh, devices that open and close relays. So, you know, and to an extent, that's what the other product I was discussing does too, but there's other levels of protection. So if I haven't bored you to death completely, I'm gonna briefly just go over how simple it is to put this turbine together. And that's all we're going to do today. And um, I appreciate your patience and I hope that we have clarified some of the issues at hand regarding small wind turbines. Um, this one is rated at 24.6 miles per hour. The um, CE ROHS you know, listings are here. The yaw bearing is internal. The slip rings are internal. And this turbine is engineered, I would expect um, 10 to 20 years of use out of this thing if used properly. Uh, the sealed bearings and sealed generator, you know, it's very important as far as longevity goes. And um, secondary to this, the blade system on this turbine, which you'll be seeing in a few minutes, is the, sometimes you'll see turbines that open up and furl. These blades are set in a manner which when the wind gets above about 35 miles an hour or so, the pitch on the blade starts to morph or change slightly as to stop producing increasing amount of torque, which is why you'll see it reflected in our power curve that it goes up, 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 it kind of plateaus, 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 and then it comes back down to a certain extent. So there is a secondary uh, braking me mechanism built into this turbine when you see that. A lot of wind turbines don't have, which is why this turbine has and carries the European Sea and um, other listings to denote safety. Um, that's about all for you. I will discuss this parts list here in just a second. We're gonna reset, pick up the camera and bring it over here and show you a few parts. And um, be back with you in just a moment.